What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make carne guisada in a pressure cooker or in an instapot. Honestly, whatever kind of pressure cooker you have is definitely going to work. Now, because we're going to be making carne guisada in a pressure cooker, just know that the meat is going to be beautifully tender. And my favorite part about the whole entire thing is that we're actually going to cut down on the cooking time. Just know that I do have a regular how to make carne guisada video here on my channel. And in that video, I actually show you how to make it on the stove. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different because of course, we're going to be making the whole entire thing from start to finish in the pressure cooker. And when it comes to the pressure cooker, do not worry if you do not have the same exact one as I have in today's video. All you wanna do is try and match up the settings as closely as possible, and you're going to see that the dish is going to come out more or less very similar. Now, there are a few things here and there that you definitely wanna look out for when making this dish in the pressure cooker, but don't worry because I will definitely walk you through that. And in case you're wondering what else you can make in a pressure cooker or in an Instapot, lucky for you, I actually have a couple of recipes and videos here on my channel, like how to make pollo guisado and my favorite, how to make ropa vieja in an Instapot. Now, enough about those videos. Today's video is super tasty. It's gonna cut down on the time it takes to cook and the cleanup is gonna be super easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Making carne guisada in a pressure cooker is an easy and fuss-free way of making some juicy, tender meat. Now the first thing we're going to do is season the meat with some mashed garlic, but you can definitely use diced garlic instead. I'm now going to add some diced red onions, but feel free to use white onions if that's what you have on hand. I'm now going to add some diced green peppers along with some salsa china, which is soy sauce. And this is something that my grandmother used to do all the time. But if you don't have some on hand, that's totally fine. I'm now going to add some Dominican oregano for that classic Dominican flavor, along with a tiny bit of cumin because a little bit goes a long way some sazón con achiote y culantro, which you can find in your local grocery store in the Hispanic aisle. I'm going to add some kosher salt, but feel free to use your favorite seasoning salt or even some adobo instead. And of course, I'm going to be adding some fresh black pepper. And to finish everything off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add some fresh lime. Now when adding the lime, be sure to use the whole entire lime because this is truly going to give a nice vibrant flavor to this dish. We're now going to mix everything until it's well combined. Now just know that there are several ways of seasoning carne guisada. And if you have your favorite sofrito that you make that's absolutely delicious, feel free to use that as well. We're now going to season the meat for at least 20 minutes or even overnight, and we're going to set our pressure cooker to saute. I like to brown the meat before I tenderize it in the pressure cooker, so I'm gonna set it to high, add some olive oil, and now I'm going to brown the meat. Now when browning the meat, it's really important that you do not, and I repeat, that you do not overcrowd the pot because we actually don't want the meat to sweat. Instead, we want it to brown evenly on all sides, so you want to make sure to stir it every couple of minutes just to make sure that it's browning evenly. And once the meat has finished browning, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to take it out. And after we've taken out the meat, we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually add some more meat. Now, depending on how much meat you're making, you may have to brown the meat in more than one batch. For me, it took me about three different batches to brown the meat evenly. And honestly, what you're looking for is you're looking for a little bit of burnt bits to build up at the bottom of the pot because all of that is filled with flavor. So once you've browned the last batch of your beef, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add the rest of it to the pot. 
because at this point we're actually going to be getting ready to pressure cook the meat and that's when the meat is going to become really nice and juicy and tender. So make sure that you mix everything when it's well combined when you've added all of the meat and now we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to add some water. And honestly, I added about two and a half cups of water. And what you want is to add enough water so that it covers the meat completely. And I always like to add the water to the same bowl where I marinated the meat because I don't want to leave any goodness behind. I'm now going to add a tiny pinch of salt and I'm going to close the lid in the sealed position. And I'm going to set my machine to pressure cook on high for 30 minutes now every pressure cooker is different but they pretty much all work the same so again you just want to place your pressure cooker to cook on high for 30 minutes and after the 30 minutes is up you want to very carefully and i repeat carefully set your machine to the vent position to release all of the pressure and you don't want to open your machine until you release that pressure because it can be rather dangerous if you do it beforehand so once you release the pressure from the pot we're going to very carefully remove the lid and you want to be careful not to burn yourself on those fumes because those fumes are actually really really hot we're now going to put our machine to saute on high because we now want to thicken the sauce now if you feel like you have way too much liquid in your pot feel free to remove some and this will definitely speed things along we're now going to add some tomato paste but you can definitely use tomato sauce instead or even a combination of the two which i like to do all of the time and now we're going to add some freshness by adding some fresh cilantro and i truly love the flavor that this gives this dish now like always feel free to alter the seasoning of your dish and make sure you taste it so that it's to your liking this is especially true whenever you're making anything in a pressure cooker or an instapot so once your sauce has thickened we're going to go ahead and we're going to add one of my favorite ingredients which is olives but it's totally optional so if you're not crazy about olives feel free to skip them we're going to add some onions and we're going to add some beautiful color by adding a variety of different bell peppers. And then we're also going to bring this dish all together by adding a tiny bit of red wine vinegar. And you'd be surprised just how much that little bit of vinegar truly brings everything together and balances everything out. We're going to mix everything until it's well combined and we're going to let it simmer for another 10 minutes until that sauce has thickened to your liking. So there you guys have it. That's my recipe for some pressure cooker carne guisada. Of course, I love enjoying this with some rice and beans and look at how tender that beef is. Until next week, I'm Chef Z y buen provecho. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Now be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you want to see more pressure cooker or more Instapot videos here on my channel. These videos are super fun to create and these recipes come together in no time. And honestly, the cleanup is a breeze, so I don't mind it. Be sure and join the Chef Z family so that you're always up to date and in the know when I post an all new video. And if you need more inspiration on what to cook next, go ahead and click right here.